almost by chance, we chose a, a very symbolic day for this, a very uh, pertinent date. I mean, as we speak, uh, before joining this uh, 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 webinar, I was watching live news from Jerusalem, which exemplify in, in a frightening way what uh, I'm going to talk about. Uh, a, a huge, rowdy uh, demonstration of hate uh, of uh, the kind of messianic uh, uh, thugs that I'm going to discuss uh, streaming through the uh, gates gate of uh, the old city of Jerusalem, uh, demonstrating the uh, mastery uh, of the uh, area, reenacting the conquest of Jerusalem in 1967. Um, so uh, what I'm going to talk about today is ideology. Uh, not an, an analysis of uh, uh, Zionist colonization as such, which I've done on several occasions. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, the specific and very unique uh, role of a, 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 the special kind of ideology, which uh, uh, as it were is used to uh, inflame, justify, uh, and uh, fuel the uh, conflict from the, especially from the Israeli side. Uh, let me also add that what I'm going to talk today uh, is a kind of sequel to uh, um, an article that I uh, published in the Weekly Worker, uh, or oh, it must have been, uh, almost exactly uh, five years ago, uh, 2017. I'll, I'll put the title and the, the a link on the chat. That is, uh, the, you can find it on, on the chat, Israel and the Messiah's ass uh, with a date and the uh, link, a uh, uh, somewhat edited, uh, slightly different version of uh, this article was also published um, um, two year, about two years ago in uh, the monthly review. And I'm going to put the uh, title and the link also on the chat. You, if you go to the chat, you'll find both. Uh, the, uh, the ass in question is not ass in the American uh, uh, sense of the word, which uh, uh, they can't distinguish between ass and ass. Uh, but uh, this is ass, uh, a donkey. Um, and the reference is to um, a prophecy by the prophet Zechariah, uh, an Old Testament prophet. Uh, if you go to uh, the book of Zechariah, chapter nine, verse nine, you'll find that the, uh, there is a prophecy of the king, uh, supposedly the Messiah, uh, who is coming, uh, uh, going to, to arrive victorious, but humble, riding not on a a great big uh, horse, but on an ass. As, a, as ordinary people, he's going to be both victorious and humble. So this is, this is the, the Messiah's ass. Why uh, this is relevant to what I'm, I'm uh, going to discuss will emerge, I hope, later on. What I'm going to discuss is really a, a, a dangerous uh, incendiary, incendiary role of a fusion and mutual adaptation of two components. The first component is a strand within Zionism, 
uh, if you like, a religious evolution or a mutation of Zionism, which uh, brought to the open um, something that was, in fact, imminent within Zionism from the beginning, but has now become uh, open and is, uh, if not dominant, is actually playing a, a leading role in pulling the, the, the cart of Zionism in its direction. This is the first round. Uh, in other words, the religious uh, uh, evolution of uh, Zionism. As I said, this was imminent in, in Zionism all the time. Uh, the second uh, element, the set, second component in this fusion is a strand within Judaism, the Jewish religion, uh, which is one of many strands. I mean, the Jewish religion, like <laughs> most, especially such an ancient religion, but the most old the religions is, is a conglomeration of many, many strands. And you can, I mean, it's like a supermarket. You can find uh, almost whatever you like in it. But there is a strand within Judaism that promotes two things, uh, the tribal view of uh, uh, the Jewish people and uh, a focus on the territory. This is not uh, uh, at all uh, uh, obvious and it's not common to uh, all religions, but it, it is certainly uh, something that is, uh, if you like, uh, a sediment in a, a, a very ancient and, and evolved religion of its various, very, very ancient archaic uh, origin as a tribal religion focused uh, on a, a given territory. You know, in, in archaic times, uh, uh, religions were uh, religions of a tribe. Uh, each each uh, uh, folk, each, each tribe had its own religion and uh, uh, with its own gods. And the gods were the gods of this territory. In the case of, of Judaism, uh, as uh, it evolved in, in from, uh, let's say the 10th century BC, I mean, uh, uh, this is the very ancient substructure which uh, later change and so on, but the, the, the most ancient uh, substructure uh, is a cult of a god called uh, Yahweh. Uh, uh, this is Jehovah in English, Yahweh, uh, who arrived in uh, uh, Palestine from uh, across the river, across the river Jordan from Edom. If you read a certain, a certain uh, verses in, in the Hebrew Bible, which are very, very ancient and describe uh, Yahweh as coming from uh, across the river from Edom, which is now in sort of the southern part of uh, Jordan. And this God had a, a missus, he had a consort called Asherah, uh, very unlike later strands of Judaism. But this was, this was a God, uh, that was a god of a given tribe. Other tribes had their own gods. Uh, the ancient religion did not deny the existence of other gods, but this Yahweh was the god of a tribe, and he was a god of this territory. Uh, he was, could only be worshipped in, in a certain area of the world. Anyway, uh, so, but this, this very archaic strand remained somewhere uh, uh, in, in the supermarket of ideas that develop uh, later on. I want to, uh, uh, so this fusion between the uh, religious component of, uh, or strand of uh, Zionism and the tribal uh, localized strand within Jewish religion is uh, uh, what constitute this, this explosive uh, incendiary uh, combination that uh, we are witnessing and is 
being being uh, 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 if you like uh, waved in 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 a uh, aggressive form in the form uh, symbolized if you like by the uh, hexagonal star which symbolizes this fusion the, this hexagonal star uh, uh, sometimes known as the star of david is at the same time uh, a fairly old not very ancient but quite old symbol of judaism it appears in synagogues uh, uh, quite quite separate quite irrespective of any uh, uh, zionist connotation but at the same time it also appears on the the a flag of the state of Israel and of the Zionist movement. This, this star symbolizes the, the fusion of the two elements. And this is the flag that is re, being waved by the uh, uh, thousand uh, thugs that are now streaming through the uh, Damascus gate into the old city of Jerusalem as I speak. This, uh, if you like, fusion uh, with a very strong religious uh, uh, element in it um, is, is not universal to a similar, if you like, colonial um, uh, conflicts around the world. I want to contrast it with, uh, uh, for example, the uh, conflict in Northern Ireland. It is supposedly a conflict between two religious groups between the Protestants uh, and Catholics. This is, of course, a misdescription. It is not really uh, uh, between, I mean, it, it is a, a basically a political uh, uh, conflict. And so it is also in the case of Palestine. The difference, however, is that whereas in Northern Ireland, there is no theological issue between the uh, uh, unionists and the, the Republican uh, communities. There is no, I mean, it, there's no point of, you know, in, in, in uh, 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 ca either Catholic theology or the, the uh, militant Protestant theology that is, that is banded by the two or that is adopted by, by the two communities. There is no uh, 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 theological issue uh, uh, that separates them. Whereas uh, theology very much plays a, 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 an important role in the, uh, the form of the conflict as it unfolds in uh, Palestine. Uh, I mean, there are cases around the world which are more similar to Palestine then to Northern Ireland. I, I, I want to mention especially India. I'm not an expert on India, but perhaps some comrades who know more about India will uh, be able to comment about uh, the theological uh, ideas that are uh, playing a role in the ideology of uh, uh, the intercommunal uh, conflicts in, in uh, the case of India. What I'm, what I'm going to say is, is what I'd like to, to point out uh, is, a, if you like, a prediction that it's very likely that the next uh, major configuration, uh, which can happen anytime, it can happen today and tomorrow, following from the, the current events, or uh, uh, sometime in the future, that is going to uh, play uh, a devastating role in local, regional, and world uh, political uh, events uh, is going to, to de be detonated by events in the holy places in the uh, unholy land. Uh, there is a, a form to this. This is, this is not uh, uh, a, a new uh, idea or, or a, an unprecedented um, explosion. 
that was detonated by uh, events in these holy places, especially in the uh, Al-Aqsa compound uh, known as Haram al-Sharif uh, to uh, Muslims and as a uh, uh, temple mount to Jews. Uh, let me mention uh, some uh, recent and uh, beginning from not so recent events that started there. In 1929, uh, a, a major event that ended up as a, a massacre in uh, Hebron, which is uh, a, another holy city to the south of Jerusalem, started because there were rumors not entirely uh, uh, invented. There were uh, not, not baseless rumors that Jews are going to take over or to infiltrate into the Haram al-Sharif, into the uh, uh, compound of the mosque in Jerusalem. These uh, news, uh, I mean, the, there was no uh, uh, internet then, and telegraph uh, was yet to be uh, uh, started in, in Palestine in, in 1929. The rumors uh, were carried, if you like, on, on, on uh, uh, animals, you know, on, on uh, uh, um, donkeys, uh, people riding donkeys or, or, or uh, uh, maybe cars. Um, uh, and the, the rumor arrived in, in Hebron in a much inflated way and caused the uh, major uh, 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 massacre of uh, some Jews by, by uh, incensed Muslims in that uh, uh, southern city. In the same city of Hebron, there was a, a massacre of Muslims by uh, a, an extremist um, religious uh, Jew, Baruch Goldstein, who was, by the way, a medical doctor, who went into the uh, mosque, the main mosque in Hebron, the Ibrahimi Mosque, which is an ancient mosque, which is believed by both, by both Muslims and uh, Jews to be the tomb of the patriarch Abraham. Uh, he went into there and, and uh, massacred, just uh, uh, machine gunned, uh, people at prayer in, in, in that mosque uh, and was only stopped by, by the, the, pre, the people uh, assembled there uh, protecting themselves and actually killing him with their bare hands. Uh, he became, of course, a hero of uh, a fanatic uh, religious Zionists and his, his uh, uh, supporters uh, are very active and prominent today in the events that were that, that are unfolding at, as I speak. Um, in the year 2000, uh, Ariel Sharon, who was then leader of the Israeli opposition, uh, made a provocative visit to the Holy Mount, to the uh, Haram al-Shari, accompanied by a, 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 a force of police and, and military. And th this, this was a major provocation, an intended major provocation. He was challenging the, the Israeli government at, of the time and led to the uh, outbreak of the Second Intifada, uh, which lasted for you know, quite a few years and claimed many um, victims. In May of last year, there was another incident that started partly at exactly in the same location. Uh, you may remember that this, this uh, was a provocation that started both in some uh, uh, part of the Eastern Jerusalem outside the old city, uh, Sheikh Jarrah, where uh, families were being evicted to make room for uh, uh, Israeli settlers. Uh, but also uh, the uh, same 
on, on the same, uh, in the same time, uh, in May 9, uh, 2021, it was the time of Ramadan then. Ramadan shifts across the, the, the calendar because it's, it's uh, dated according to the Muslim cal calendar, which is lunar. So it shifts around the, the uh, solar year. Uh, last year it was it was uh, uh, earlier than uh, today than this year, and um, uh, there was a provocation there, uh, also uh, uh, triggered by uh, a, a march of uh, vindictive and provocative uh, Zionist uh, uh, religious Zionist settlers. Um, and uh, this led to a, a, a reaction from Hamas and other uh, uh, Muslim factions from Gaza and uh, set off uh, the uh, confrontation, the destruction of a, a, a big part of the Gaza Strip. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, an echo of more recent events is the destruction of the bombing, the deliberate bombing of um, the building which housed the headquarters of the uh, news uh, agency Al Jazeera, uh, which uh, Israel doesn't like very much because it doesn't, uh, it, it's too, too objective for its taste. Uh, the echo of this is the, the assassination by an Israeli sharpshooter uh, 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 of the Palestinian journalist Shirin Abu al -Akla. So this is, you know, this is a theme that, that goes through, but the, the, the trigger in, in, in that case was, in last year's case, was uh, also uh, at least in part in the, the holy sites in, in Jerusalem. Uh, I must uh, 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 point out that the um, part of the sensitivity of this uh, uh, location is that Israel is uh, in its own way in a salami method way, um, trying to change its own commitment to the status quo that, that was agreed by uh, Israel uh, soon after the uh, occupation of Jerusalem in 1967. This status quo, that is to say, to, to preserve the very fine balance of uh, let us say, a, a custodianship of the holy site of uh, uh, Islam, the Haram Sharif, which is the third holy place in, in Islam, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, actually, which is one of the two great buildings on this compound. Um, this, this dates back to uh, uh, very old times, including uh, the uh, uh, Palestine under the uh, Turkish, rule under, under the Turkish Empire, which was preserved by the uh, 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 British during the time of the British mandate, which gives uh, the uh, uh, Muslim work, the uh, Muslim endowment, which uh, uh, as it were is the formal owner of, of this uh, site, uh, uh, the, the right to manage it and uh, prevent it uh, the agreement was to prevent uh, uh, non-Muslims from entering the compound around the, the, the uh, mosque of uh, Al-Aqsa and the uh, Dome of the Rock, which is the other great building, actually more, more wonderful in, in architectural terms uh, on, on, uh, on that compound. Uh, soon after, uh, the occupation of Jerusalem in 1967, Moshe Dayan, who was then uh, in the Israeli cabinet, was the Minister of Defense, made an agreement with the uh, Hashemite uh, uh, king, at that time King Hussein uh, of Jordan, that uh, 
only Muslims will be allowed to pray on, in, in this compound. Uh, people of other religions um, would be allowed to visit as tourists under uh, the uh, uh, protection of the uh, Muslim uh, uh, custodians, the Muslim, uh, uh, if you like, uh, uh, managers of, of, of the site under the Muslim Waqf, which is the Muslim endowment owning the place. But uh, no, uh, no non-Muslims would be allowed to pray on uh, uh, that compound. That was the agreement uh, made between the Israeli government and the Jordanian government. The Jordanian government was recognized by Israel and is still recognized by Israel as the formal custodian of this holy site. Now, why did Dayan make this agreement? I mean, the not allowing Jews to go uh, as well as other the Christians or Buddhists and so on to pray on that, or not that any Buddhist would like to go and pray there, but uh, why, why would, would Dayan make such an agreement? Simply because Dayan knew that Orthodox Jewish rabbis forbid Jews to go on this uh, holy site. Uh, the reason being, and I will go into it, that uh, uh, at that time, the dominant strand of Orthodox Judaism um, regarded uh, uh, the incursion of Jews or going of Jews to this holy site as a sacrilege, uh, because in order to, for Jews to be allowed uh, uh, to, to go there, they have to be purified. And the purification requires all sorts of rituals that were not available in our days. Um, Orthodox Judaism has been dominated by, uh, 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 not, 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 not to say anti-Zionist, but certainly uh, uh, an injunction against uh, going uh, on this uh, uh, holy site. So you'd be surprised, why are they doing it now? Well, there has been a mutation, which I'm going to uh, describe in the ideology. Ideology is a very flexible uh, kind of thing. It is malleable, it is plastic, it is elastic. It can be modified to suit material uh, uh, purposes. Uh, but uh, what, what is, what is uh, let me describe what is happening. Uh, the, this uh, uh, messianic strand within uh, 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 Judaism um, has developed, uh, as it were, in, con in contrast to the traditional position of Orthodox Judaism. Uh, as as we speak, uh, I mean the, the the if you like the author of this mutation of of uh, rabbinical Judaism is uh, 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 was a certain rabbi uh, called uh, Abraham Isaac Cook, who founded. A, uh, yeshiva in, uh, I think it was 1922, uh, in which he uh, promoted a, a sort of uh, very, uh, at that time, a very uh, unusual theology. Whereas uh, standard rabbinical Orthodox Judaism forbade Jews to uh, uh, dominate Palestine to uh, in, incur uh, to uh, uh, certainly to go onto the Holy Mount because this was supposed to be left for the Messiah. The Messiah will come one day and 
the, that, that Messiah, of course, the Jews are uh, not waiting for the second coming. For Jews, uh, Jesus, of course, was an, an imposter, one of a series of imposters who claim to be the Messiah, but the Messiah is yet to come. Uh, and when the Messiah comes, then uh, uh, riding on, on his uh, uh, prophetic uh, ass, uh, uh, he will uh, gather the Jews in, in the Holy Land. Uh, Rabbi Cook uh, uh, um, developed a theology according to which the Messiah is actually coming. And the Zionism is uh, the herald of the Messiah. So, the, uh, whereas, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you mustn't, you mustn't uh, uh, force the hand of God before the Messiah comes. Here is the Messiah coming. Uh, if you pointed out to him that, that uh, uh, Zionism, as, as it was then, was a mainly secular movement. How can it be a herald of Messiah? His answer was that, uh, yes, but Zionism is like the ass of the Messiah, the ass on which the Messiah will come riding. And that is the origin of the uh, title of my uh, two articles. Uh, in this, this yeshiva was the sort of uh, place where uh, uh, the present fanatics are uh, well hatched. Let me describe the, the, the spectrum of uh, uh, what is taking place, the, the kind of, the kind of uh, public that is, that is uh, the arrowhead of this uh, uh, religious Zionist uh, fusion of Judaism and, and uh, Zionism. Um, first of all, there are the grown-ups. The grown-ups are, <laughs> if you like, the uh, political leaders. People, I mean, I, I would like to mention two um, uh, figures who are sort of best known among the leadership of, of, of this strand. And by the way, uh, for the most part, these people are not among the, the uh, 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 strictly religious orthodox uh, strands of Judaism. They are not Haredim. They are not the, the, the kind of people you can find in, in uh, 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 some areas of New York or, or in, in, in some areas of, of East London who are uh, recognized by their uh, garb. Uh, dressed in black and so on, uh, who are uh, the, the, the strict uh, 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 followers of uh, the Haredim. Haredim uh, 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 means literally the fearful. They are fearful. Fearful of what? Fearful of God. They, they fear the Lord, if you like. So they, they uh, follow strictly the traditional views of, uh, if you like, medieval Judaism uh, that uh, is opposed to, to these political shticks. The uh, movement of these uh, religious Zionists comes from the less orthodox, the less extreme in religious terms, the less extreme strands of, of uh, uh, Judaism. Let me mention two figures. First of all, Bezalel Smotrich, who was at one time uh, uh, deputy speaker of the Knesset, and he's a, he's a member of the present Knesset. Um, uh, he has uh, uh, openly preached for the ethnic cleansing of the uh, majority of Palestinians from the West Bank. He's constantly threatening, I mean, he's, his uh, uh, template is the book of Joshua, which is about the ethnic cleansing of the land of Canaan by the uh, uh, Jews who uh, uh, emerged out of Egypt as described in Exodus. The book of Exodus describes the, the, the uh, coming of the Jews out of Egypt and or the Israelites more, more correctly. 
And the book of Joshua describes the ethnic cleansing of the land of Canaan as they uh, conquered it. Of course, these are all myths. <laughs> it's not something that actually happened historically, but uh, they are taken seriously by uh, the kinds of uh, people I'm talking about, the, the uh, fanatic uh, nationalist terms, fanatic messianic uh, uh, Zionists. Uh, he has been, if you like, overtaken on the right by uh, Itamar Ben Gvir. The difference is that Smotrich, despite his, the, the, the very extreme content of his preaching, is, uh, if, you, if you like, relatively uh, civilized in his behavior. I mean, he's not, he's, he's not uh, a, 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 a great, if you like, uh, demagogue. Ben Gvir, on the other hand, uh, uh, is, is a rubble rouser, is a, is a thug. Um, he has a form, by the way, in the uh, 1980s, he was a, a, a young member of a group that uh, was declared a terrorist, a Jewish terrorist group by the Israeli authorities. Um, he uh, uh, escaped prison. Uh, I mean, he, he did, did not did not spend much time in prison. He never he never served in the Israeli army because the army didn't want to take him. He was regarded at the time um, uh, when he was eighteen. That was in 1994. He was regarded by the Israeli army as too dangerous in a in uh, uh, right-wing sense to serve in the army. So he was exempted service on ideological grounds. Uh, he can be compared to a man running with a burning torch uh, and looking for gunpowder. He is a, a, a dangerous rubble rouser. You can find him you, uh, in, in the uh, uh, live television uh, coverage of the events that are going on as, as I speak, I could spot him among the, the big crowds uh, who were who are, uh, uh, chanting and dancing uh, and, and, and uh, uh, shouting uh, provocative uh, slogans uh, uh, in the uh, uh, vicinity of the, the Damascus Gate of Old Jerusalem. So these are the grown-ups. They are followed by a, a lot of young people, uh, typically uh, teenagers and er people in early 20s, unmarried uh, for the most part. Uh, if, if you like, the arrowhead of this uh, younger generation are fanatics who uh, populate uh, settlements in the uh, West Bank that are regarded as illegal, even by the Israeli authorities. They just go there and establish uh, uh, bridgeheads uh, near Palestinian villages and towns, and uh, uh, they engage in harassing, Palestinians attacking them, attacking their property, their houses, their vehicles, uh, burning cars, slashing uh, uh, tires, uh, uh, harming their livestock, uh, their crops, the uprooting their olive trees. And they engage in land robbery. They, they, they take over pastures and cultivated fields, water resources. Uh, they are protected by the Israeli armed forces. Although their presence there, in many cases, is illegal, even according to Israeli law, they are still protected by the Israeli armed forces. And they, uh, uh, a, very, a very common occurrence is when a Palestinian farmer, uh, a, a shepherd or a, a an agriculturalist complained to the Israeli police, look, I'm being attacked by these thugs. The Israeli police comes and guess what? They arrest the complainer. 
for questioning. Of course, they, they, they come and say, yes, they, they, there is a clash here. Uh, we, we, uh, we have received reports of a kind, you know, something is going on here, a clash. So who, whom do we arrest? We don't arrest the, the uh, religious young thugs. We arrest the, the, the elderly shepherd or farmer uh, who has made the complaint in the first place. This is, this is a very common occurrence. Okay, uh, so what is, what is behind this, this mutation? What is behind this fusion of uh, uh, Zionism on the one hand and militant religion on the other? I would like to quote from a, a dialogue that uh, took place in the Israeli paper Haaretz uh, not long ago. Actually, it was in, in, in April this year. The dialogue was between uh, two uh, writers who are both of them critical of uh, uh, what is going on, of these, these uh, uh, provocations. One of them, uh, is Gideon Levy, uh, whom I regard as a very good reporter of atrocities committed by uh, Israeli settlers. Uh, I don't think much of his uh, uh, political analysis. The other participant is a, a, a brilliant satirist uh, who signs as a B. Michael in, in English, in uh, uh, Hebrew, it's Bet Michael. Uh, his real name is uh, Michael Brison, who is a columnist in Aretz, brilliant uh, satirist uh, uh, in, in every way. Now, they, they uh, uh, debated the issue raised by, first of all, by Gideon Levy, who claimed that this religious uh, 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 palaver is only uh, 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 pretense. The, I, I put the URL also on the on the chat. Here it is. He was at, he was actually writing about the, the religious sort of uh, uh, claims of. Uh, both sides of radical Islamists and of these uh, uh, religious Jewish thugs. Let me quote from his article. Everything is immersed in religion and fundamentalism. The Temple Mount, Joseph's tomb, another focus of, of uh, uh, trouble in the uh, West Bank. Uh, the yeshiva at Chomesh, the pilgrims, the worshippers, Ramadan, the sacrificial lamb, the temple, a religious war taken straight out of the biblical stories. Despite this, goes, he goes on, uh, Levi, uh, make no mistake, religion is only a theatrical prop. The motive driving the settlers and their supporters remain remains ultra-nationalist, fueled by real estate considerations, including the attendant uh, evil violence and sadism employed by settlers and the authorities behind them." End of quote. Here is a, a, a reply by uh, Michael, the, the, the satirist. I'll put his... Uh, article also on the chat. Okay, now I, I'm quoting from his response to uh, uh, Gideon Levy. The title of the article is Religion, Not Nationalism or Real Estate is to Blame in Israel. That's his title. No, it is really about religion. It's almost all about religion. And religion is absolutely not just scenery, as you wrote in your op-ed. I wish it was, but this is a religious drama in which faith is the playwright, the director, the producer, the cast, and even the cashier selling tickets. 
you wanted to make things look worse than they seem by casting messianic settlers as imposters, cynics, and pseudo believers who in real life are greedy realists pursuing real estate. But it's not who they are. They are authentic religious lunatics. They really want to remove the abomination, quote unquote, from the land and to purify it. They really do dream of the day when the blood of the sacrifices will be sprinkled on the altar. Likewise, they are true zealots in the fullest historical and bloody sense of the word. And zealots, history teaches us over and over, are much more dangerous than cynics. End of quote. Let, let me just comment that uh, whereas uh, uh, Gideon Levy has no religious background. He was not brought up as a, in a religious school and so on. Uh, uh, Michael has a religious background. He started off at, got, uh, as a young man. He was he was uh, went to religious school, so he knows a little bit more about religion than uh, Jewish religion than than Gideon Levy. But who is right in this dialogue? Who do you think is right? Well, my view is that both are right. This is this is the thing about ideology. Ideology works only when people really believe in it, right? But people believe in a given ideology when uh, it serves their purposes, when it suits them. So uh, I think Freud is something or, or an analog of uh, a Freudian analysis is needed here. Uh, people believe very, very uh, passionately in things but uh, they are not always uh, uh, cognizant of the motives for why they believe in it. Uh, this is why ideology works. Ideology wouldn't work if it was just a theatrical prop. Okay. Now, uh, of all ideologies, the most uh, efficient, if you like, the one that works uh, most potently is religion. Second to religion, the second most uh, uh, potent ideology is nationalism. And I think the, the reason I'm not uh, pretending to be a, an expert on these things, uh, but uh, it seems to me that the reason why uh, these two things, are really, first of all, religion, why it is so potent is because it's uh, uh, the injunctions come from, as it were, above. It is not something that, that uh, the next door fellow has, has, uh, uh, has, has come up with. It is something that is ordained by uh, uh, forces above us. People actually try to sacrifice their lives for religion. I mean, I, religious martyrdom is very, very widespread in various uh, places around the world. Second to religion, uh, nationalism has claimed also uh, a, a large number of martyrs. This is also because uh, uh, its, its, its demands seem to come not from some individual, but from, as it were, the community to which the individual belongs. Of course, the community is imagined. It's not that uh, nations are imagined. Uh, I'm quoting here Benedict Anderson, uh, a, a, a quote uh, or, or a description of, of a nation as a, a, an imagined community. I think this has been misinterpreted by a lot of people as if he claimed that nations are imaginary. He didn't claim that. He claimed that the feeling that my nation is a sort of a community, my community, this is imaginary. Because of course, uh, uh, nobody uh, knows uh, personally all members of uh, uh, his or her nation as one does uh, in a real community. A real community is, is a, a, a collection of people who more or less know each other. Of course, a, a, a member of a nation doesn't, doesn't know the, uh, all other members of, the, so in this, in this sense, uh, the, uh, the nation being a community is imaginable, not the nation itself, which is a, 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 obviously uh, something that exists in an objective sense. Uh, so 
what so th this this is a, 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 a very potent uh, uh, combination of two very uh, potent uh, kinds of ideology religion and and nationalism the actual people who hold this ideology the the, the uh, religious fanatic uh, nationalists that, that i'm i'm uh, talking about are not a, a, a majority among the Jewish community in Israel. Let me give you uh, some estimates. Uh, the, first of all, the Jews or people who, who are who self-described as Jews are 75% uh, uh, of the population of Israel. Uh, Arabs are 20%. The rest are people of various other uh, descriptions. Among Jews, 43.45% uh, describe themselves as secular. That is to say, they don't follow any, uh, any religious practices. About a further 33% describe themselves as traditional, which means they follow some I mean, the, this is a, a big spectrum of, of people who follow some. I mean, they, they, they may uh, not eat uh, pork uh, or they may uh, 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 keep certain uh, religious practices, but not, not in any consistent sense. Um, about 10% are Haredi, uh, which, as I say, are, are not part of this uh, uh, public or, or messianic uh, Zionists. There are uh, many of them uh, opposed to Zionism, certainly not, not very fanatic about. Although there has been a change and some of the Haredim are moving towards the, the uh, nationalist sector. So that, that leaves about 11% of uh, uh, the Jewish uh, uh, population of Israel, 11%, roughly 11% who are a, a religious uh, Zionists. This is not a big number, but they extract a very high price politically and they set the agenda. First of all, their numerical uh, size is deceptive in the sense that some, in, in some political situation, a small group uh, uh, numerically can ex exercise a big uh, political uh, uh, influence. Uh, a, a, an example of this is the DUP in Northern Ireland. The DUP is not a, a huge uh, uh, section of the population, certainly not of, not of the United Kingdom. But uh, look at the influence they uh, have exerted on, on, on uh, UK politics. But uh, more than that, I think that it is not simply their uh, uh, ability to play political games, which is considerable. Uh, I've said somewhere that settler colonialism is like a gas. It expands to fill all available spaces. Uh, this, this applied to the uh, settler colonialist occupation of the North of America, uh, Australia, and it, it, it is applying to the colonization of Palestine as, as we speak. It expands for various reasons. It keeps expanding. Why do the settlers always feel they need to expand their, their domination? Well, there are various reasons for this. I, I, I won't enumerate all of them. First of all, there is a feeling of power. We can do it, so why don't we do it? I mean, we are we are stronger, so uh, that is uh, a reason to do it. Then there is a um, consideration of security. As settlement expands, at the margin, at the at the uh, uh, edge of the expansion, it meets resistance by the people it's, it's, it's been excluded. It's been ex excluding, sorry. Uh, so the settlers uh, feel themselves as, as under attack, under attack from their victims. 
Um, this is a, a, a dialectic of the need to subdue uh, what has been described in the American uh, uh, Declaration of Independence to, uh, 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 to defend against merciless Indian savages. This is how the victims of American colonization was described in the American uh, uh, Declaration of Independence. They complained against King George who is, who is uh, uh, supporting these merciless or uh, inciting these merciless Indian savages against the, the innocent settlers. Uh, then there is, there is a, a drive to gain resources, uh, land, nice place to live and so on. But no uh, uh, drive for further expansion, which is inherent in settler uh, colonialism, can succeed, can work without ideological justification. These needs are not sufficiently uh, uh, strongly motivated to justify. In the case of North America, it was uh, the, the well-known uh, uh, destiny uh, uh, of uh, um, the, the uh, American settlements, something ordained uh, uh, by, by the higher uh, powers. Uh, which, as it were, made it uh, uh, okay to uh, expand, to justify the expansion. But uh, uh, also to implement this expansion, uh, there is need for uh, a committed vanguard. And this role is played by the Messianic Zionists. They are the commando units of Zionist expansion. Uh, the messianic activists succeed not only because of their political value, DUP style, but also because the mainstream Zionists have no real ideological counter weapon. Zionism, as, as I put it in one of the articles, uh, I mean, the uh, mainstream Zionism had a, a secular ego. But even then, in its beginning, when it was apparently secular, it had a religious id. It started as a secularized version of a religious ideology. Zionism basically is a, was and started as a secularized version of a religious ideology. Zionism. Uh, claims the Jews are a nation, but it is not a nation in the modern sense, independent of religion. It, it is a, a nation a, 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 com claimed by Zionism, but it's compatible with only one religion, Judaism. A convert to Judaism is considered a member of the Jewish nation. A convert from Judaism uh, no longer uh, is no longer a member of the Jewish nation. Uh, and the ostensibly secular Zionists were in fact deeply inspired by religion. Not Judaism as it existed where Zionism arose in, as a rabbinical Judaism of, of the, the 19th century, but that, not that, but the archaic layer depicted in the most ancient books of the Hebrew Bible. The uh, uh, Zionists, of course, uh, uh, were inspired not by the Talmud, which is the sort of uh, main text of rabbinical Judaism, but by the Hebrew Bible, which is uh, 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 the, the, as it were, archaic layer of the, the uh, uh, Zionist of uh, Judaism as it evolved over many centuries. Of course, uh, uh, Judaism is a, a highly adaptable. Uh, uh, religion, like like most religions, it's got many layers and many components. You can, as it were, like you go to a supermarket, you choose what, what, what suits you. Uh, I described 
the, the uh, ancient, the archaic uh, form of, of the religion that, that existed, let's say in the uh, ninth century B BC, but that is not uh, uh, what Judaism became uh, uh, later on. It, it underwent many transformations and changes both in time and in location. I, I'm not going to go into that in detail. But the, the uh, bottom line is that Judaism was adaptive and cumulative by superimposition. It didn't reject the old, the old stuff outright. It simply uh, uh, put it on side and built further layers upon it. Um, so uh, 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 rabbinical Judaism evolved from the, the Talmud, which was uh, 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 composed the main, the main uh, uh, part of the Talmud, the one, the most influential part, was uh, 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 composed not in the Holy Land, but in Mesopotamia, in what is today Iraq, uh, in uh, 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 so the so-called Babylonian Talmud, uh, which was sort of uh, evolved and, and uh, reducted uh, in late classical antiquity. Because the center of the Jewish religion had shifted from uh, uh, the Holy Land, the uh, land of, of Israel or the land of Canaan, uh, they were very keen to stress this by trying to uh, warn against the, the uh, 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 focusing of Judaism on, on Palestine. And hence the prohibition that is in the Babylonian Talmud against uh, uh, political uh, uh, attempts to gather the Jews in, into Palestine. Uh, they adapted to the fact that the Judaism was no longer a religion based in, in the original Holy Land. Compared to this, a much later uh, uh, evolution, if you like an analogous one, uh, which happened in the uh, a, a, a Jewish community in America, in the United States. Uh, as the uh, Jewish uh, community in the United States became a, a, a big center of uh, a, a, the a Jewish religion. It adapted itself to this. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is exemplified by the biggest uh, section, the biggest movement in uh, uh, American uh, Judaism, the uh, US Jewish reform movement. The uh, founding document of this movement, which dates from 1885, uh, reacts to Zionism in a very negative sense. Although Zionist movement had yet to be founded officially, Zionism was still in, was already in the air in certain parts of, of Europe. And this is what the platform of uh, uh, American uh, uh, Jewish reform uh, movement stated in 1885, quote, we consider ourselves no longer a nation, but a religious community, and therefore expect neither a return to Palestine, not a, a sacrificial worship under the sons of Aaron, nor the restoration of any of the laws concerning the Jewish state. This is, this is if you like, an analog of what the, uh, the uh, authors of, or, or the, the uh, final authors of the uh, Babylonian Talmud uh, uh, claim or, or uh, uh, laid down in uh, early antiquity. I mean, Judaism is no longer focused on, on uh, uh, Palestine. We are not a nation, we are a, a purely a religion. Of course, uh, as I explained, there, there are uh, still strands in Judaism that can be uh, tilted the other way. I mentioned the, the uh, theology of Rabbi Cook. Um, so th this is where we stand now. Uh, the uh, uh, 
fanatic religious Zionists are able to play their role because they uh, believe passionately in what they are doing and in because the other uh, strands of Zionism have nothing to uh, counter them with. Uh, let me just make a few remarks about the other side, the, the relation between nationalism and, uh, and religion on the, the Arab side. Uh, the situation is, is quite different. Uh, modern, uh, uh, first of all, uh, Arabization and Islamization came together to Palestine. I mean, Palestine became predominantly Muslim uh, at the same time as it became, became uh, uh, predominantly Arab. That is to say, you know, uh, around the year 700 AD. Uh, but uh, although Arabization and Islamization came together, there is no organic link between them. The biggest Muslim countries uh, in the present world are not Arab. And Arabs may be non-Muslims. I mean, uh, uh, there, are, there are many non-Muslim minorities, Christian and other, uh, in uh, Arab countries. In fact, modern Arab nationalism was a dialectic counter to pan-Islamism. And typically, modern Arab nationalism was pioneered by non-Muslims. That is, you know, because, because Arab nationalism was a, an alternative to pan-Islamism. Uh, I, I can uh, mention uh, uh, the, uh, one of the most important ideologists of modern Arab nationalism, his name was George Antonius, a, 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 a native of Lebanon. By his name, you can see that he was not Muslim. Um, similarly, uh, among uh, Palestinian leaders, you find lots of non-Muslims. George Habash, the leader of the Popular Front. Uh, Naif Hawatme, the leader of the Popular Democratic Front. Uh, and of course, the latest heroic figure of Shirin Abu Akhle. Uh, she was Catholic. Uh, and typically in her funeral, which was viciously attacked by the Israeli police, uh, when the service was performed in the Catholic Church, ca Catholic uh, priests and Muslims, uh, uh, Muslim uh, uh, religious uh, leaders prayed together in their own style. I mean, the, you had the picture of a Palestinian national uh, hero being, being uh, uh, prayed for in, uh, on, on, uh, in her funeral by a, a, a Catholic priest side by side by a Muslim, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, praying, praying both, both Christian and Muslim prayers together side by side. You don't have this on the, on the Israeli side. So uh, uh, it is true that Islamism has come back uh, in, into the scene of Palestinian nationalism and not only Palestinian, but in, in uh, the Arab world uh, more generally. This is because of the political failure of secular Arab nationalism. Uh, this created a vacuum into which uh, um, uh, is Islamic ideology has come, has come back and implanted itself. Nevertheless, uh, uh, so the situation is, is, is not, not at all parallel to the one on the Israeli side. Let me mention that nevertheless, the Dome of the Rock is not only a, a, a religious symbol. The Dome of the Rock is, first of all, a, a distinct, uh, it, it, this, this is, is not the same building as the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Dome of the Rock is a magnificent, uh, uh, structure, one of the earliest uh, structures uh, of, uh, of Islamic art. Uh, but it has become a nationalist symbol from early times on. Under the British mandate, uh, you could find the Dome of the Rock 
as a symbol of Palestine on the uh, Palestinian pound note. Okay, if you if you look at the, the old Palestinian pound note, which was equal to the pound sterling under the British mandate. If you look at postage stamps of Palestine under the British mandate, you find the Dome of the Rock as a symbol of uh, 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 Palestine as a country, uh, and specifically an Arab country. Um, and uh, uh, therefore, the, the uh, symbolic uh, uh, power of the, the Dome of the Rock specifically, not so much the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is the mosque, but the Dome of the Rock, which is a, 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 an architectural gem, is a, a focus uh, for uh, Palestinian uh, people who are not Muslims at all. So uh, the, uh, this, this is uh, an explanation as to why uh, the events that started last year around the, the uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque and the, the Haram al-Sharif uh, uh, took, uh, uh, I mean, swept not only Muslim uh, uh, Palestinians, but Palestinians of all persuasions. So uh, I think I'll stop there. I've spoken enough uh, and uh, leave it at that. <laughs>